Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining my talk today. My name is Aparna Dhanakran. I graduated from Cal in EECS, and after Cal, I worked on Uber's machine learning team for a number of years, where I worked on building pieces of their ML platform, Michelangelo. After Uber, I began my PhD in computer vision at Cornell before I decided to focus full time on building Arise. Arise is an ML observability platform. We're a startup based in Berkeley, California, and our team comes from folks who have built ML infra platforms and analytics platforms. We're bringing the best of both worlds to Arise AI. Today, there's a lot going on in the ML infra space. There are so many companies, it can be confusing. I break up the space into three distinct groups. There's a set of companies that help you with data preparation. There's a set of companies that help you actually build the model. And then there's a set of companies that help bring that model from a research environment into a true production environment and make sure it's successful in production. Any scale has some, has some functions in a number of these verticals. There's you know, some functionality that they have in hyperparameter tuning, they have abilities for model training, and excitingly, they also have ReServe, which helps serve the model in production. Today, I'll be sharing how users of ReServe can serve with Ray and also have model observability with Arise. Arise integrates across the inference flow. We capture the inputs of the model, the features, we capture the outputs of the models, the predictions, and we also have a way for, to capture the actuals, which you might not get until sometime after the models made the predictions. We gather all of these signals from the models and we're able to enable teams to troubleshoot, monitor, and explain their models in real time in production. And we do this through a number of different ways, but we provide teams abilities to do distribution checks, feature analysis, really deep prediction quality um, analysis, model performance tracking, and, and real-time alerts. So today, what I thought we could do to make it exciting is first show an example of how Ray and Arise can work together. You've all seen you know, how RayServe works. Um, this is an example where they're able to you know, spin up a model and really quickly spin up an endpoint to deploy the model um, and, and, you know, any, any service can call, you know, this endpoint and get model predictions. Once you have this endpoint and you're able to just pass a request um, with model inputs um, and generate a prediction, you're ready to actually bring in a rise and log the inference, the inputs that are going to the model and the output of, you know, the model service and, and log those predictions directly to Arise. And so here we're showing a really quick sample, um, you know, example where, you know, it takes less than 10 lines of code. You're able to hop in, log the model predictions, um, and then you also have that follow-up API call to log the actuals if, you know, you're, you're able to log the actuals. Now, I'm going to hop into a demo so that you can really quickly see a rise in action on a model that was served by Ray. And today, you know, to make it interesting, um, I, I wanted to give you a little bit more details on what this example really is. So the model that we're going to be looking at today is a loan initiation model. Um, and so we're trying to classify, you know, if this loan initiation is a fraud or not fraud. Um, you know, the data for this comes from Lending Club. It includes features um, such as purpose, interest rate, address date. Um, and the model is predicting, you know, fraud, not fraud, and, you know, if there's an unknown value. For, for kind of the, the, the fraud classification. So I'm gonna hop into the demo real fast um, and let, let's run through, you know, what, what is a typical, you know, troubleshooting example that you might encounter once you've actually put a model into production. Great, so now we're logged into the Arise platform. Now, you know, you've built this model, you're serving this model with Ray, and you, know, you suddenly become aware that there's a lot of customer complaints about false positives. We're classifying a couple of, you know, a, a set of these loan initiation, you know, class, loan initiations as fraud when it really shouldn't be. And so now let's actually figure out what's wrong, 
where the model's um, having issues and try to figure out if we can fix this. So once you're logged into the Arise platform, um, you can really quickly set up dashboards um, with preset troubleshooting workflows that have the best practices and standards, depending on the type of model, the type of inputs that you're able to, to pass into the platform. And so in this case, since we know that um, you know, we're getting a lot of customer complaints, specifically from California, we can really quickly, you know, in this view over here, you're seeing things such as prediction counts, actuals, a view of sort of, you know, different evaluation metrics, you're able to look at different features. I can really quickly just slice and dice and take a look at this specific model, um, specifically for the slice of California. And so now, all of my you know metrics that i'm looking at all of the counts and evaluation metrics are all updated just for the slice where the the region that i'm looking at is california and you know using these filters we can definitely see that there's something going on here um there's some dips i don't really know why but it does make sense that it's it, you know the, the complaints that we're seeing are, are real they're not just you know some some complaints that folks are telling us, you know, that, that might not actually be true. And so usually in this case, what I like to do is compare what's actually happening in production versus um, what I've seen in training. Because I've known that model when I was training it, I know what the inputs were, I know what the distributions were, I know what I've seen and what I've built my model on, but I can't always guarantee that when I'm in production. And so really quickly, what I can do is if I can just hop in here, um, I can pick on a specific region, sp pick a specific slice um, and a set of features and set up a dashboard that looks specifically at the training versus production comparison. And I, in, in this view over here, I'm looking at all of the different features and comparing you know, what I've seen in training to what I'm seeing in production. And what I'm really looking for right now is, is there any set of features that have a really big variation between my training world and my production world. And, you know, as I'm scrolling through this, I'm seeing there's definitely, you know, loan amount has some variation between what I've seen in training, what I've seen in production. And this feature over here, purpose, is another one that looks like there's some, there's some differences in, in what I've seen in kind of training and what I'm seeing in, in production. And so what I could do, you know, with the rise is really quickly pick a certain couple of these slices. Maybe I just want to look at loan amount as a whole. I want to pick a couple of these purpose, you know, slices, maybe where purpose equals, you know, debt consolidation, maybe if it equals kind of major purpose and set up and set up a dashboard where I'm looking at specifically for these specific slices, what was my performance? And so now I'm looking at, you know, I've jumped from kind of, you know, Here's a region that has a problem. Here's kind of comparing it from training and in, in training versus production to diving into here's these specific slices that um, might be m might give me some insight into what's changed um, and, and might be causing an issue in my model. And so as I'm looking through kind of these these different slices, um, really quickly generated, I was able to kind of look into performance really quickly. Um, you know, what I think there's really an issue going on over here is that for low loan amounts, I just am not performing well. Um, and so, you know, there, it seems like there's kind of a, a, you know, a set of samples here that I might not have for low loan amounts in production that my model is classifying as fraud that I just haven't fed enough in sort of a training environment. And so in this case, it might be helpful to, you know, hop back, give it to the data scientists, um, you know, ask them to retrain the model, including more samples um, where there's kind of a smaller loan amount. And in, you know, just being able to go from, you know, here's an issue I'm getting a customer complaint down to, you know, here's the set of slices that I need to go look at, here's training versus production differences, and really getting down to, hey, I think low loan amounts, this is an issue, let's go bring this back and retrain the model on is kind of the troubleshooting workflow that, that, that shows that there's kind of a data distribution change happening over here. And so hopping back, you know, in, into, into the rest of the presentation, um, you know, we walked through kind of one troubleshooting use case um, that showed that, you know, there was a data distribution between, you know, what we trained our model on in, in, 
in our training environment versus what the model was starting to see in production, which is a lot of low loan amounts that it was misclassifying. And so this is kind of one troubleshooting example that we were able to cover, but there's a lot that we haven't, we just didn't have a chance to go through. And there's a lot of challenges that can happen after a model is actually served. Um, you know, there can be model drift, which includes performance drift, data drift, concept drift. There can be their distribution changes, black box models where, you know, there's not enough explainability on why a model made a decision, um, you know, data quality issues, and general model readiness, knowing, you know, how can you compare different versions of a model together? Um, which, which model do you actually promote um, into production? And so finding and troubleshooting these issues today across the many different models, many different versions that a team has is pretty difficult. And today, you know, you wouldn't launch software without observability. And the world of model development is headed there soon. You won't be able to launch a model in without some kind of observability to figure out where are these issues, what's actually causing them, and, and really deep tools to help you analyze and understand why your models are behaving the way that they're behaving. And, to, and so today, teams without a model observability platform, you know, the process is pretty manual. They first spend time validating their models pretty manually, and this slows down the team. And they do things such as performance checks, maybe data quality checks, to actually make sure that their model is ready to go into production. Um, with a platform like Arise, you know, you, every time that you have a new model or you have a new version, there's automatic validation that can run. That sets up performance tests, it sets up feature level checks, it sets up sensitivity analysis. And so really quickly you're able to validate that model and accelerate it from you know, the research environment and really bringing it into production. After validation, you know, teams today, you know, even after if they're not using an observability platform and they finish the man, they finish the manual validation, there's still a consistent investment that's put into, you know, custom observability solutions that, you know, maybe they're ad hoc scripts, maybe they're ad hoc dashboards that are created for a specific model version. And they're, they're, they're using these to try to understand and monitor their models when in reality they just don't go deep enough and it hides underlying performance issues that can cause them a real headache when when they're called into customer complaints and so with with an observability platform like rise you're able to be proactive instead of reactive about these issues and so you know really quickly before you launch a model you can set up dashboards that you know set up alerts on data distributions set up alerts on drift and so you you can actually be alerted when there's a change that's happening in the inputs or the outputs of your model and really quickly troubleshoot and get to why and 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 getting to that why helps you get that much closer to getting to a resolution and figuring out what do you need to do to actually improve that model and so the average customer who's using arise today has caught a problem within 15 days and ultimately this lets the data scientists and ml engineers get back to what they're best at, which is building models. Arise is really set up to be an open platform. And so, you know, today you saw an example of us integrating with RayServe. Um, you know, regardless of the type of platform that you're serving your models on or what framework you're, you're actually using, Arise integrates and sets up, um, you know, observability with, with kind of you know, agnostic of the platform and the model that you're actually using. Um, we're today in private beta with a number of amazing companies, and we're really excited to, you know, give early access to passionate Ray users. So please reach out um, at Arise.com if you're interested in getting access to the Arise platform. Thanks so much for listening today.